Hello everyone and welcome to the 35th Coco Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with NS View Controllers in Coco. So I've already done a tutorial on how we can work with NS Window Controllers, and the idea behind that is that you can have a single NS Window Controller subclass that can control a window. And what you can do is then uh, create all the code that's going to interact uh, between your data and your view, which is your window, and it just controls basically all the content on the window. And so that's great for controlling and separating your application into separate components for every window. And we can do a similar thing though with views using the NS view controller class. So we can even separate this into smaller portions and basically create a controller for individual views. And this is very useful when you want to swap an entire view on your window to something else. And so that individual view can have its own controller class and it makes your life easier because you've just separated it into smaller components. So um, we're just going to get uh, jump into this and this is actually going to be a two-part series. The second part is going to be how you can resize the views properly using Coco Auto Layout because it's not at least I haven't found a simple way to do it, um, but um, that's going to be the second part of this tutorial. And the first part is just going to be swapping uh, these views. So the first thing we're going to do is add the app controller that we usually do. So NS object and app controller. And we'll go ahead and save it there. And then we're going to add two views to this as well. So uh, how we're going to do this is just new Objective-C class. We're going to be using a subclass of NS view controller, and the class is going to be named first view controller. And what we want to do specifically is add a new nib file for this so that we can already have a new nib file as uh, the first view controller will be our file's owner and it'll have a connection to a view in the nib file. So, this is just a nice feature Xcode gives us. So, we can go ahead and hit next on this, and we will save it here. All right, so now that we have that, as you can see, it creates that new nib file with uh, the file's owner already linked to the view. And the reason this works is because the NSViewController class has an IB outlet for a view. So this is, uh, you know, very basic NSViewController stuff. The next thing, of course, is adding that other uh, view controller. So we'll just say second view controller, add the nib file with that, and we're all set to go. So there we go. Uh, what we're going to do on these views is nothing too special. All I'm going to add is a label just to differentiate between the two. So we'll add a label here. And the label will just be first view controller. And we'll add another one to the second view controller with a very similar thing here. Just call it second view controller. All right, so now we have these two view controller classes here. And what we want to do is basically on our main window, we want to have a way that we can swap between these two views. And we're going to do that by using view controllers, of course. But what we want to do is specifically embed these views into a view that's already on our window. So we'll add a custom view and we'll drag this out and realign this, something like that. And then we'll add a pop-up button, and this will just allow us to swap between the two views that we have. So on the pop-up button, we'll have the first item called first, the second item called second, and we'll just delete the third item since we're not gonna be using that. And the last thing that we really need to set up here for Interface Builder um, so far is that we wanna set specific tags on each one of these little cells in our pop-up button. So what we want to do is the first one is going to be, have a tag of zero. So under your attributes inspector, just make sure the tag is set to zero. It's the default, but anyway, just check it out. And the second one, we want to have a tag of one. So the second, second one here is going to have a tag of one, and the first one's going to be zero. And what this is going to allow us to do is when we swap using the pop-up button, we can ask it for which tag or which button is currently selected, get the tag value from that, and then we can switch between the views knowing which one is actually selected. And the tag allows us to know uh, which button is currently selected. 
All right, so now that we have that, we can go over to our app controller and actually uh, let's go back here quickly so that I can add that app controller object. So add the object to the workbench here. And this is, you know, what we do every time. Add our app controller. There we go. All right, so now in our app controller class, basically we have a few things to set up. So we're just going to add a property. We're going to make it a weak property for our NS view. And that's just the view that we have in our main window there. So this is going to be an IP outlet, of course, NS view. And we're just going to call this our view. The next property we're going to have is a NS view controller. It's going to be a strong property because we're actually going to own this object. Remember, uh, weak property means for any uh, any object you're really uh, connecting to in the view controller or in our uh, interface bit builder, rather, you're usually going to make those weak or assigned properties because we don't own that content. We don't own our, our our view right here. We're just creating a connection between it. But the NS view controller right here. I'm going to make a strong property for because we're actually going to own this NS view controller. So we're going to call this our view controller. And there we go. So those are the two properties we're going to have, and we'll have to synthesize those in just a bit. So the next thing we're going to add is an IB action. And this is just going to allow our pop, we're going to connect this to our pop up button. And this will just be called whenever we change whatever is in our pop up. And this is what we're going to do is call this change view. And the idea is that. Whenever the pop-up button is changed, we're going to change the view. All right, so the next one we're going to have, and this is the last method of the day, and it's change view controller, and it's just what I'm calling it. And this is going to be where all the logic is placed for actually changing the view controller itself. So what we can do is uh, make this a uh, NS integer for our parameter, and what this is going to allow us to do is pass in a tag. And so, uh, we, whenever we call our change view, we're basically going to be calling our change view controller method. We're going to call this pass in a specific tag, and it's going to be representing which view controller we're going to swap in and out. All right. So with that, uh, we can go ahead and flip over to our app controller because we're ready to implement this. So we can go ahead and synthesize our uh, pro properties here. So we have our view. And we're going to say underscore view. Synthesize our view controller gets underscore our view controller. Again, that's just the instance variable names that we're going to keep for those values. All right, so the next part here is that we're going to add some constants to uh, basically identify which tag we have and the names of our view controller um, nib files. So the reason we make constants is that uh, you know, when you're working with strings and numbers, it's not always clear on what you're doing. So, for example, if we're going to say, well, if tag 0 is selected, what view are we switching to? Well, it's not very clear if we just say tag 0 or tag 1. For somebody else that looks at this application, they might see what the heck is tag, you know, what is the value of 1 uh, when we're switching our tag. But we, you know, we know that it's going to be our second view is tag value of 1 because that's what we set in our nib file. But, you know, we really want to be clear, <coughs> excuse me, about what um, values we're using. So to do this, we can use an enum. And basically, this is just going to uh, set integer values to our constants. So we can just say k first view tag. And it's going to have a value of 0. And then our k second view tag. And that's just going to have a value of 1 because in an enum, it's always just uh, you set some value and then everything after that is just plus one of that value. So the k first tag we're saying is zero and the k second view tag is going to have a value of one. And if we kept adding it, it would just keep adding one to each um, consecutive value. All right. So now that we have those tags, the next thing we want to make constants for are the names of our view controllers. And I know that kind of might sound kind of confusing because you know, we might not need that, but if you're using uh, the name of your view controller nibs all the time and you go to type first view controller and you, you know, just write that as a string in your application, it might look clear, but if you mistype it there and you go to run your application, you might not really know it, you know, went wrong. Uh, it might run fine and just you don't really understand what happened. And by making a constant, you can just say, well, there's only one place I define this. 
I spelled it wrong here, obviously it's not going to work, but you know that if you spell it right with a constant, it's going to be right everywhere. So what we're going to do is make two and a string constants. So we're going to say uh, constant and a string, and this is going to be a, uh, we're just going to call this, uh, what are we going to call this, k first view. And all this is going to have is the value of the, or the name of our nib file, which is first view controller. And we'll make another constant pointer to an NS string. And we're going to call this k second view. And of course, it's going to be our second view controller. Okay, so now that we have all those constants laid out, we can now start writing our actual code for uh, the different methods that we had. So um, what we want to do here is make sure that we have, um, actually, before I go ahead and do this, I did forget to um, go through our nib files and make all those connections. And before I get too far and forget, I may as well do that right now. So uh, go to your app controller here in your nib file. And our change view IB action, we want to connect to our pop-up button. And our view outlet, of course, we want to connect to our view. Anyway, sorry for jumping around like that, but uh, before I forget and wonder why the application's not working, I figured I better change it. All right, so the first method we're going to be using is awake from nib. And all we're going to do with this is basically set up the view to be uh, the first view controller when we start. So what we'll say is, well, uh, we're going to call self change view controller. And we want to be the K, uh, the first view, so we'll say k first view tag, like so. And that's just that value zero that we set. And you can kind of see how this is already useful because if I just say change view controller zero, that's not very obvious what I'm actually changing it to. But when I say k first view tag, that's much more obvious that I'm going to set it to the first view. All right, so let me go ahead and make some space here so I have a little bit more room to work with. Um, but uh, what I want to do next is make the next method, which is our change view. Change view like this. And basically what we're going to, I'm just going to relabel this IB action. And just so it's, you could leave it as void, but as you well know, I like to change it back to IB action. All right. So now that we have that, uh, basically this IB action, all it's going to do is call our change view controller and um, what it's going to do is take the value from our pop-up button, so the tag that's selected, and we want to just call change view controller with whatever tag is selected. So we'll try to get the tag first from our pop-up button. So we'll just say NS integer tag gets our sender, which is our pop-up button. We want to get the selected cells tag. And since the selected cell is just an NS menu item, basically it's going to take the tag of the NS menu item. And the NS menu item class is a tag method, and that's what we're asking it for. And again, we already set up that tag in our uh, nib file, so uh, we're all set to go. So uh, this will get whatever tag was selected from our pop up button. And what we want to do now is call where all of our you know, main stuff is going to happen, which is in our change view controller. We're going to pass in our tag. All right, so now we get to implement the last part, which is our change view controller with the tag. Okay, so what are we doing here? Well, we want to switch between whatever view controller that we have selected. Basically, we want to switch between the first and the view, second view controller, depending on which one is selected. And we can use a switch statement to do this. And not that switch, whatever the heck that was. We want to use this switch statement. So uh, switch, and we want to use the tag as our expression. So we're looking at whatever tag is passed in. If the tag is equivalent to our k first view tag, then we're going to set our view controller to be the first view controller. So we'll say self dot our view controller gets a new first view controller. And uh, did I remember to import these files? No, I didn't. So um, basically, I didn't import my first view controller and my second view controller. So of course, I have to remember to do that if I'm going to create a new first or second view controller. So import first view controller and import second view controller. All right. So now that we have that, of course, I can now alloc init these things. So first view controller alloc init. And the method we're going to use is init with nib name. This is just 
method that's in the NSView controller class. And in it with nib name, uh, the nib name is going to be our k first view. Remember, this is equivalent to the first view controller right here, which is our the name of the nib file. And it's just going to be in, uh, we're just going to pass nil as the bundle, which makes it uh, the default bundle, basically. The next case that we can have is our k second view tag, like so. And what we're going to do in this one is self dot uh, our view controller. And instead, we're going to get the second view controller. So second view controller alloc in it with nib name k second view bundle nil. And of course, we'll put our break statement as well. And if you don't uh, remember how switch statements work, this was back in the C tutorials, but it just looks at uh, whatever expressions here, basically value of our tag. And if uh, you know the tag has a value k first view tag or has a value of k second view tag, then either one of these cases is going to happen. And the break just means it gets out of the switch statement. All right, now that we have that, we've switched between our view controllers. Now we just have to basically add our view to the view. So uh, we take the view from our view controller and we just want to add it to the view that's in our main window. So to do this, we can just say, well, our view, we want to add a sub view. And this takes a parameter of NS view, of course. And the view we're going to add is from our view controller. So whatever current view controller we have, we want to get its view. And that will be added to our view. So that's great. It's going to add that to uh, the view there. And what we're going to be doing now is that, of course, we want to make sure that this is framed correctly so that uh, whatever size our nib files are, they're going to shape correctly to the view that we have in our main window. So to do that, we just have to specify the size of our view controller's view. So we can say our view controller view. We want to set your frame, which is just the size of the view. We want it to be the same size as our view because that's what you know it's not it can't get any bigger than the size of our view so we want to set it to the size of our view so we'll say our view and we want to ask the view for its bounds and the bounds just means basically the uh, it's going to be the size and width or the height and width of our view because uh, the bounds just means it's the coordinate system of our view uh, with uh, basically in the coordinate system of our view. So if we were to say instead our view frame, that gets where the our view is located relative to the window, but we really want the coordinate system of our view itself. So that'll start as uh, the, the corner of our view will be zero, zero, and the bounds will make it just the length and the width of our view itself. So that's what we wanna do. We just wanna set the size of this view to be the size of this view. So that's what we're doing right there. The last part, uh, well, actually, I'll go ahead and run this, and uh, you'll see what's wrong with it. But uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and run this here. And you can see we can swap between, the, we, well, first off, we'll go to resize, and you'll see it won't work because we're using Cocoa Auto Layout. But if you use Struts and Springs instead, you can set this up to work uh, pretty fine. But anyway, you can play around with that if you want. But by using Cocoa Auto Layout, it's not going to resize for you automatically. But you can also see another problem is that it's not removing the previous view that we had uh, in this. And of course, we don't want the old view to stick around. So what we want to do is remove that. So we can just say our view controller. We're going to ask you for your view, and we want you to remove yourself from the super view. So we say remove from super view, like so. So since here, we're adding our view controller's view to our view as a sub view. Here, we want to remove that uh, whatever view was previous there, previously there. Uh, we we want to remove that before we change the view controller again. So here, we're removing whatever view used to be there in our uh, in our view, and then here we're just adding it back on. So we can go ahead and run this again, and you can see that now it switches just fine. And of course, the layout doesn't work properly, but that's going to be for the next tutorial. Anyway, I will see you in part two of uh, our view controller. We'll figure out how to get Cocoa Auto Layout to work correctly. All right, see you next tutorial.